So when stocks are simply going up and to the right, dividend stocks often become an afterthought. And that's simply because who really cares about three to 5% dividends when you're getting consistent double digit gains in the stock market? Well, unless you've been living under a rock, you know that that is no longer the case and that is not the market that we are currently in. So that is why I think this is a great time to start thinking about dividend stock investing if it's something that you've never done before. And the reason behind that is because with a growth stock investment, the only way you can make money is through that asset appreciation or buying low and selling high. Whereas with a dividend stock, you can make money from that asset appreciation, but you also earn money through that dividend, usually on a quarterly basis. So what I like about dividend investing right now in particular is that it sort of gives you a hedge against low future gains from the stock market in the future because you're essentially giving yourself the ability to be paid here in two different ways. So even if you buy a particular dividend stock and the share price goes lower or it stays flat, you are still generating returns through those dividends. And if you reinvest them, you're getting more shares to then earn more dividends in the future. So we're gonna be covering my top three dividend picks for right now, as well as my criteria behind that selection. And then after that, we're gonna be jumping into my M1 Finance portfolio and doing a monthly update. If you are interested in dividend investing, M1 Finance is a great place to do that based on features like dynamic rebalancing, automated dividend reinvestment, and more. So that's what we're going to be covering here, guys. But before we get into the video, I just have to make a quick disclaimer here that I am not a financial advisor. This is not any sort of financial advice, and you should always do your own due diligence and research above and beyond this video before investing. So that being said, let's now get into my criteria for these three dividend picks because it's important for you guys to know that I'm not just pulling random stocks out of my you know what, and these were picked for very specific reasons. So the criteria for these picks were as follows. Number one, we were looking for stocks in a defensive industry. And these are industries with consistent spending, regardless of the underlying economy. Whereas basically these industries tend to underperform during a bull market, but outperform during a bear market. So we are not looking at cyclicals. We are strictly talking about more defensive, boring industries. Second of all, we're gonna be looking at the front score, and this is essentially a free artificial intelligence stock research app that I personally use. I'm also an angel investor in the company, just for a full disclosure there, but it does give you a really handy score looking at multiple factors related to a stock, including company financials, historical stock performance, ESG, news, and more. So we will be bringing that into the equation as one of our criteria. Number three, we're looking for the consistency of this investment. So we're looking at their track record of dividend payouts, as well as how long they have been increasing that yield. And then number four, in this point in time, I feel you need to be looking for a decent yield. And in order to hedge against low future gains in the stock market, in my opinion, you should be looking for at least a 3% dividend yield at this point in time. So all three of these picks here meet this criteria. So let's get right in here with number one. So first off here, guys, we have Exxon Mobil trading under the symbol XOM. Now, if you have been watching my channel for any period of time, you know that I'm not really a big fan of the oil and gas industry, and I've never really owned any of the big oil companies like Exxon Mobil, BP, Chevron, etc. However, at this point in time, for the foreseeable future, I, in my opinion, think that oil stocks are a good investment. And I do own an oil and gas stock, but we're gonna mention them later on in the list because they're a little bit different than your traditional oil and gas company. So as far as the oil and gas industry goes, the spending is pretty consistent. However, you do have to keep in mind that any travel related you know, fuel consumption would go down in a recession. However, there is such a squeeze right now on 
on oil, based on the situation in Russia and many different things that I think that we are relatively safe here with oil or actually it's kind of a situation where we should just continue to expect to pay, you know, four to five bucks a gallon at the pump for the foreseeable future. Now, jumping over to that all important front score, they're coming in here at a 663 falling under the good category. Now, as far as that dividend yield, it is currently right around 4%. So I do think it is enough there to hedge against low future gains. And now let's talk about the consistency of that dividend. Well, ExxonMobil has had 38 years of consistent dividend increases every single year, making them a dividend aristocrat. And these are 60 plus coveted companies that have been growing and paying dividends every single year for 25 years. I actually have a complete list over on my blog, ryanoscribner.com. I will link up to that down in the description, and it gives you an overview of every single one of these dividend aristocrats as far as their payout ratio, uh, share price, etc., and different information about them. So you may want to check that out as well at the end of this video. Now, ExxonMobil literally just reported earnings, so I think it is relevant to bring that up here. And what they came out with yesterday was quarter one 2022 revenue of $5.5 billion versus $2.7 billion in revenue for quarter one of 2021. And that just goes to show you how much oil prices and energy prices, as well as people just being out and about traveling, can increase revenue for a company like uh, ExxonMobil, where they more than doubled their revenue here uh, just in one year based on those two factors. So in my opinion, until inflation is under control, we're going to see these runaway energy and gas prices. So I think it's a pretty safe bet here to keep an eye on inflation. And if inflation starts cooling off, maybe that's time to potentially exit some of these oil and gas positions. But for the time being, I think as long as inflation remains high oil prices are going to be high as well generating more profit for these oil and gas companies so moving on now guys to number two on my list here that is consolidated edison trading under the symbol ed now this is a company in the utility industry and what i like about that is that they're able to essentially pass most of their costs along to the customers. Now that's the industry that I actually came from when I worked a nine to five job. I worked for a publicly traded regulated power utility called National Grid. Now they're normally the one that I would include here as a utility pick. However, their particular stock has gone up quite a bit in recent months. And now looking at that PE or price to earnings ratio here, if you're looking at Consolidated Edison, they're coming in at a 24.4, whereas National Grid was coming in at a 28.3. So at this point, Con Ed is a much cheaper valuation based on their earnings, comparing them to National Grid. So that's why they're on the list here instead. Now, what I like about that is um, being a regulated utility, a lot of the co costs, as we said, are passed along. They're regulated by the Public Service Commission. And not to mention, most people out there are paying their utility bill before they're even paying their rent bill. And that is because utility companies are very quick to go out and shut off power, which used to be one of my old jobs at that company. So for that reason, I think it's a consistent industry, pretty boring, but it's a decent place to park your cash during times of uncertainty, in my opinion. So moving on to that all important front score here, they're coming in at a 636, putting them under the good category, and they currently pay a dividend yield of 3.3%. Now, as far as the consistency of that dividend, they are the winner here on this list of the three because they have 48 years of dividend increases, making them another one of these coveted dividend aristocrats. So that is another one that you may want to throw on your radar. And then third and finally is the investment that I actually own myself. I don't own the prior two stocks listed, but I do own this master limited partnership called Global Partners, trading under the symbol GLP. Now, since this is a limited partnership, they are obviously involved in the oil, gas, and energy business. But what I like about them in particular is they also have a massive portfolio of owned or leased convenience 
convenience stores, giving them sort of a diversified revenue model and a very solid vertically integrated business where they're able to be the ones producing the gas products and then bringing it to the pumps and then selling it at their convenience stores. And I can tell you based on where I'm at here, uh, I'm in upstate New York for a little bit visiting family and this is it right here. All Town Fresh is the name of the convenience store near us and they just have the cheapest gas by a landslide compared to anyone in this area. So they're doing extremely well over there at that location. They just announced their next dividend and we're going to cover that at the end in my portfolio update. But this has been a very solid investment here for myself. Now, as far as the front score, it is coming in at a 526, giving it a score of neutral. And part of that is due to weak historical chart performance, as well as a weak ESG, environmental social governance. Um, I haven't looked into that too much myself, but it is something that is important to consider in the future is the ESG component of your overall investments. Now, beyond that, one of the reasons in particular that I like them is that with MLPs, you're typically going to get a lower PE, lower valuation, and a higher dividend yield. And so right now, the dividend yield of this MLP is sitting at a staggering 8.9%. Now, that being said, you are giving up that stability there of consistent dividend increases because they only have two years of increasing that dividend every single year. However, you are getting a much larger dividend yield if you are interested in like a smaller cap type higher risk investment. So right now, guys, this is my second biggest position in the stock market next to my number one position, which is, of course, Genius Brands. We'll talk a bit more about that later on in the portfolio update, but it is a very, very big position here for me. I sold off my blue chips in the summer of 2021 and rotated that money into a different couple different places, some into real estate, some into some different stocks. And part of that was GLP. And I have recently added to my position in Global Partners after I sold off Dave & Buster's as well as Verizon. So I now own more shares than ever before, and I do plan on continuing to accumulate more. Alrighty guys, so that covers my top three dividend picks here. Now we're gonna jump into my M1 Finance portfolio, and we're going to be doing a full update on what is going on over there. Okay guys, so here we are inside of my M1 Finance portfolio, and honestly, we we are in a really, really bad spot in the market right now. So to have any green whatsoever here, I have to say I am quite happy on top of the dividends that I have earned from GLP. Now we do have earnings coming out for both of these stocks in the month of May. GLP is reporting earnings in the first week of May and Genius Brands is reporting their earnings somewhere around the middle of May. Now Genius Brands just did their annual report as well as earnings for quarter four and I did a full video covering those earnings. I'll put that card up in the corner if you haven't seen that already, but we are going to be getting quarter one earnings here right around the corner for Genius Brands. So of course, next month when we do our update, I would expect to see some moves here, hopefully in a good direction uh, based on that earnings report. So if we jump over here to the holdings tab, uh, we could just be completely upfront about the bloodbath that is this portfolio. So yes, Global Partners, I do have a smidgen of gains there still up about 3.4% or $2,300. And yes, I have earned somewhere around $3,000 worth of dividends. But of course, I do have this major red spot in my portfolio, which is Genius Brands currently down just over 31,000. Now I own this stock across multiple portfolios, 100,000 shares total. And I do update my current cost basis across that entire position over in that update video I did up in the corner. So if you're curious how much money I've currently lost on paper, be sure to check that out. We did get an update here from Global Partners regarding their next cash distribution, which is going to be 59.5 cents per common unit held of Global Partners. So for me personally, I have just over 2,500 shares of Global Partners. So I'll go ahead and do the math and tell you what this dividend will be. So based on the shares that I currently own, my next quarterly dividend, which is going to be paid out on May 13th, is going to be in the amount of 1,000 
$589.75. So I am pretty darn excited about that. And I'm definitely going to consider reinvesting this money back into global partners in the future. That way I can just accumulate more and more shares. Now, guys, if you haven't yet gotten started with M1 Finance, I do have a completely free 30 minute step by step training that's going to be linked up down in the description below. It's going to walk you through step by step how to get started with investing as well as some tips related to dividend stock investing. I also wanted to let you know about the current transfer bonus here going on with M1 Finance. So based on however much you transfer in or deposit, you can get a bonus of $25 up to $250. So if you're not happy with your current brokerage account and you want to make the switch and make some money in the process, be sure to check out this current promotion going on with M1 Finance. Lastly, guys, if you want to keep track of all of your investments in one place and get access to that all important front score on your portfolio as well as your individual stocks, make sure you download front at getfront.com slash Ryan, or that's going to be linked linked up down in the description below. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications. And as always, I hope to see you guys in the next video.